Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today we're looking at a game by Nestor Games called Mammalath. This is a game that I first discovered on the website Board Game Arena. I was very impressed by it. It's a game I only gave 5 out of 10 to initially on there. That increased it, 210 grams, to like a 5.5, a 6, 7, 7.5, 8, and it's kept on rising. So let me show you what it's all about. Well, firstly, very interesting kind of small, obviously, uh, thing that's held in, this little case, like kind of like a pencil case, and it went through the letterbox, went through very easily. The rules are very simple, it's just a double-sided piece of paper, and there's literally only three things you're going to be doing. This game is in the same series of games as Yavalath, which is um, by uh, Custer Brown, and basically um, it's called Ludi. So Cameron Brown designed that, it's basically an AI-themed game, and let, let me show you this. This is this mat that you play on, so it's the board, but actually the board is a neoprene mat. And what I'm going to do is deliberately, when I've been playing this, playing against this line here. So hopefully that will be in shot and today I was neaten up the camera a bit. So this is a neoprene like mouse mat thing. You're going to have various pawns here for two different colours, black and white. Now I typically find um, you don't need too many of these, so we're just going to leave a few out. And I'll uh, crack on with a few more if, ne if needed. So the winning condition and uh, the losing condition are kind of two sides of the same coin. And in fact, the losing condition is a subset of the winning condition. So that's the whole premise of this game. Very, very cute tokens, um, one of the best I've seen in, in games. And I'm gonna leave that in shot just to show you there. So you're gonna place these out. So this is where I can talk to you a bit because it takes a, about a minute and a bit just to chuck these out. You can place them however you want. You can put all the reds together if you want. I've played this game 220 times online. So when I most played games, I never log online plays, but because of the uh, lockdown, I chose to. Um, I will say one thing, um, as lovely as these pieces are, and they all seem to be identical for the relevant animal that they are, I do find that it can catch a little bit on here. So a tiny niggle. And as you can imagine, uh, one phrase that people have been said as they played this is, it's a little fiddly. So it's very quick to set up online because it's automatic and it's random. And as whilst it's random here, you just need to keep doing this. Now, a game that I rank in my top 10 games of all time also has this kind of similar thing whereby the setup time is almost, you know, maybe a, a third as long as the actual gameplay. And that is, hey, that's my fish. But still, I think it was worth its merits to still give this game a go. And people do enjoy this. They keep saying, yeah, I want to keep playing this game. So the first day um, this arrived, we played it eight times back to back. And then the next day we played it nine times back to back. Now, abstract games this is an abstract strategy game. They do recommend playing games, you know, a few times in a row because you're getting used to the flavor and, and how you're going to do stuff. So what's the end of the game? Well, we are representing loggers, which is a very morbid kind of theme, to be honest. And what we're trying to do is basically go out and carve up a bit of land or grass, as it looks like to me. So you want to try and get a row of three. The trouble is there are animals here. I'll explain about the different animals on here in a moment. So you kind of want to do this one, two and then three. You then lose the game. So you might go there, someone else goes, I don't know, they're black, and they go there. You go here, they go here, and then you go here. And then you've lost. You've lost because there are animals underneath. So you need to be clearing off the animals, and then if you can have three in a row without anything there, so you might have got one, two, cleared this row, so this is where the fiddly bit comes in, do that, and then now black goes and they go, oh, I don't know. I'll go, well, they could automatically lose and do that, which does happen, so they go there. This is why I like playing this in real life, because there's many things about um, abstract strategy games whereby you can be feeling a bit distant, you're just constantly just looking at the screen, waiting for someone to think about a move. I don't feel you get the same kind of analysis or paralysis in a game of an abstract strategy, because you can quite easily see the kind of move someone could do. You haven't got any hidden information. So now um, White has managed to win because now it's a clear row and it's done it. Now it doesn't state in these rules, I don't believe, but online, and it's how we play it, it's called a pie rule, which means if I happen to go somewhere that I think is really good, so I might think, I don't know, uh, yellow is really good, maybe they're clustered, and I'll come on to the, another option in a moment, then black could say, well, actually, no, I want that turn. So then uh, they take, they swap over. So, as you can see, these things keep falling over, but I have to admit, as annoying as that is, um, I thought you could use maybe magnets. Online, they seem to be more like counters, like in drafts or checkers. And uh, maybe use magnets to help pick them up. 
Um, but pointing things are handy because you can quite clearly see where they are. And if they're two in a row, it, it's quite easy to do that. So the first thing you can do is you could place down a piece. Remember, three in a row and you win. That is horizontal, diagonal, or vertical, however you should orientate it. Okay. By the way, I do like the fact that it's got obviously the name straight away. You can Instagram it and you can see that Grant Fikes or Grant Fix, I think it's Grant Fikes, is the designer of this one. And you can see basically how you play it. So in terms of the, uh, the manufacturer, the publisher who actually designed this, this is pretty much being custom made for me. There's very, very few copies. I think, well, I think three online I saw on Board Game Geek. But yeah, Nesta, let me try, and he's from Zaragoza. So this is Nesta Romal Andreas, if I pronounce that correctly. This is his company, as you can guess, from Nesta Games. Lots of his made, I think, 300 games now that have gone to publishers. So very, very cute. So the first thing you can do is you could place down a thing. The second thing you could do is remove the animals. You've seen me do that already. The third thing you can do is remove, so you can move three in a row, three, three, just as, as you place to try to win. The final thing is you can move all of one type. So I might choose to remove all of these chaps here. So let me just explain about these different animals rather than calling them chaps, so I don't get too friendly. Now, you can be interpretive. I personally think this looks like a hippo or an owl or something like that. But the easy one to tell is the elephant. Very cute looking elephant here. So we have the elephants. We have the red armadillos, which look a bit like foxes and stuff like that. We also have over here the violet, or my name being Simon Lavender. This is a mass games. It is a fox. So we have a cougar. We have the orange cougar over here. We also have the deer, the green deer. Okay. And then that final animal, which is uh, the yellows, which I've just removed. So as you can see, I've just removed all those animals. It is called the, yeah, this is called the cougar. So I do apologize. It's the orange badger. So the orange badger. So now they've all gone. So maybe that was my first turn. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Black comes along, goes, all right, I'll take that. White comes along, goes here. Uh, black goes here. And now white goes, hmm, well, he could go here or something. The trouble is he could realize, or she could realize that, uh, or they could realize if they remove, if black removes the oranges, so let's just, just do it as an example, and white went somewhere else, white can't stop that. White goes there and black wins. So white has to do something like this um, uh, when this was still down. And then obviously you have to be, obviously, play as you would afterwards. Now, the game duration is quite short. It's about a five minute game on average based on 237 plays. So as you can see, I've played this game a lot now. Uh, online, I got as high as I think 16th best in the world, which is basically 16th best of the people who've played this uh, on Board Game Arena. And yeah, there's lots of options out there. So some things, I won't go into strategy. This is the kind of game I think would be nice to discover. But something that did happen, um, which I've screenshotted and you can see some pictures on Instagram, which isn't necessarily going to show the strategy, is I was in a position whereby, speaking about that winning condition, the losing condition, I did something like this. I did, I think I had a piece there, piece there, this piece here. And what happened was, I then went, ha, I'm going to go here. I won, but I lost. That's the great thing about learning on a computer, is the fact it does show you, you have actually lost, uh, because it tells you, -da -da -da, you know, you've done something incorrectly. So these things do stack neatly into here. One thing to be aware of, though, is they can get stuck on here. But the other good thing in a positive light is they're really nice to play with when you're waiting for your turn. And my fingers aren't really the right size and shape for this, but you can kind of do this, which makes it very scary when people do this against me. So when you do finish, you're going to have a few things taken up. Now online, it'll just reset straight away if you want to rematch. But over here, you've got to place things out. Now, you might think, oh, it's most of the board hasn't been randomized if you want to do a quick start. But actually, you can just go eh, and do that. And remember, with the pie rule, it doesn't matter. You can make it as uh, similar to the last game as you like. It can be as different as you like as well. And it only takes just over a minute to, to reset. In terms of the fragility, I've accidentally dropped this and a cone on the floor for like a meter height and nothing happened, thankfully. So these acrylic pieces have sustained that as well. Um, and finally, if you have any other questions and if you've liked this, please do hit the like button. 
If you've obviously got anything to double check and query, please check the description and I'll make sure I keep that updated. But lastly, yeah, if you have anything else to, to question about this, you know, how you play it, anything around that nature, please get in touch. There is an expansion. There is an expansion which doesn't come with this one, and that relates to um, having two extra animals. So this is the six by six area, but as you can see, it does expand a bit more. So that's called Mammalath Plus the Advanced Game. And it's optional expansion, as I mentioned, and adds two more of each animal from the base game. Plus, there are going to be two more animals, so it makes into a total area of 64, and you can have white giraffes and black hippopotami. So in terms of this rule book, uh, perfect English throughout. Um, I've read a, lot, uh, a number of autobiographies and a number of other publications recently, and I have to admit, there's still typos and editing errors and stuff. So in terms of these, these things called tokens, you're going to get more of them as well. You're going to get 32, so again, half of that board. Now, it could happen that every single space gets taken, but uh, I think that's highly unlikely. I think um, by its very nature, you might end up uh, getting a three in the row automatically. So the crucial thing to watch out for is trying to trap your opponent. There's a thing known in uh, abstract games called tempo, whereby you're trying to keep an eye on what the other person's doing and kind of maintain a flow and a rhythm with what you're doing. You always wrap it up. It does come in here with a bit of information saying always wrap it with a board picture on the outside. And what I tend to do is just curl it up like this. So if you want to see more videos, maybe from Nestor, maybe from other companies, I've got more games coming next week and uh, next month and even the next season. Uh, please do keep on uh, checking out the videos and subscribe if you want to see it first. There are also going to be videos on um, abstract variants, as well as on other videos to do with promos and expansions. So hopefully you found that of interest. Like I said, I find it beautiful to look at, highly portable and, and obviously very easy to set up. It's literally unflap this piece of paper. And that is Mammalath. I hope you enjoy it and enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the next one. Take care and bye-bye.